Yep, so recording is on. So welcome, everybody. Um, let's start this new um, Jenkins infrastructure weekly. So um, there are multiple things that a few people would like to, to bring here. So, But before we start, I just want to highlight the fact that I enabled the mark uh, for emails uh, on the Jenkins.io and JenkinsCI.org. So basically, DMARC is, I mean, I have no idea how to pronounce that in English, but um, basically, it's the two. It's, um, it's a new feature on email. So the idea is when you have, um, you can enable SPF on your email, you can enable uh, DKIM on your emails. And basically, if those checks are failing, basically, uh, it send a report um, to a specific email address. So for example, um, if I, if you try to send an email and you just specify the from either uh, jenkinsia.org and you're sending that email from a non-authorized um, IP address, it just block your your, your email and send, me an, uh, and send me a report saying that, you try to send an email, um, even if you are not supposed to do. So the good thing, the, the no, not, not necessarily the good thing, but the interesting thing is, I'm receiving a lot of reports saying like a lot of people try to send emails on behalf of the Jenkins project. Um, but on the other side, we also have a false positive or um, yeah, specific configuration that you have to update. So right now, um, every email should be sent via SendGrid. So I'm configuring each services to use the SendGrid API. Um, but yeah, it's something that we can still see in the, in the, in the coming weeks. Like um, if you send an email and it does not arrive, um, yeah, don't feel free to open an issue there. So that's the most important one. Um, yeah. Uh, just a question. You mean sending emails from uh, CI Jenkins IO and other CI services? Yeah, so basically, if you send an email and you specify the from header jenkinsia.org, so let's say that you send an email and just said um, no reply at jenkinsia.org, whatever. So the, uh, that email can be sent, for example, from Jira. It can be sent from um, some machines. Uh, it depends. Normally, we don't use that a lot. I mean, we basically don't use that because mailing lists are using Google Groups. Um, so yeah, that's why that's why I was surprised to see so many uh, emails sent on behalf of the Jenkins project. Um, it's still not clear how to to publish and how, how to use those report because basically I just receive each time um, someone try to use try to send an email I receive a report with an attachment that contain a zip file. Then I have to I mean I have to unzip the the, the attachment and then I have a beautiful XML file. So um, yeah, it's not not really clear right now the best way to use those reports but um yeah that's why it's going to be hard to detect if um we are rejecting um real emails that should be sent yeah so uh, but basically it doesn't uh, save us from somebody else um uh, sending this email so for example if i am as a malicious attacker uh, send a efficient campaign using uh, whatever admin at jenkins io um, if it doesn't go through our service, we don't capture it, right? No, sorry. It, that's the purpose of the. That's oh, the purpose sorry. of this. So okay. that the idea is just to be sure that nobody is allowed to send an email saying it's coming from Jenkins that are your project or Jenkins. So basically, for that, it used two checks. Um, SPF. So the SPF is just. Um, something that you specify in your DNS records, it's just um, DNS records uh, of type TXT. And so basically inside that, you just say uh, either um, you can send email from a domain or from a specific IP. So this information is public, you just I, I can give you the, read, uh, the the check after that. And the DKIM is something used to encrypt the email. So just to verify that the email was really sent from that specific uh, source. And so this is an additional protection, um, basically. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, second second topics, um, the GitHub project. So basically, I'll let you ask on RC to enable GitHub projects, um, spe specifically for the Jenkins Radio website. Uh, do you want to, I mean, to tell a bit more about this? Uh, yeah, so the context that we are preparing to your UX hackathon, and uh, since we agreed uh, that we would rather prefer to use GitHub issues for this project, uh we need to somehow group these issues and uh, to, for grouping we have three main ways labeling milestones and github projects so now we have access to milestones and labels but it would be great to also have ability to create projects so that we can have uh, dashboards and uh, other cool things available 
Um, so yeah, specific, so basically what I did is I enable the GitHub project uh, on the Jenkins Info organization. I also enable it for Jenkins.io websites. Um, I think for a specific uh, project like this, I mean, it, it could make sense to, to use it, but um, I think this is something that we really have to pay attention for the whole organization, because if we start it, if we start using it for every Git repository, it will really become a mess very quickly. Yeah. Um, I, I think so. we need it maybe for plugin site and uh, other repositories in the future, uh, no strong opinion, uh, but definitely not uh, org wide. Okay, so, and if we want to do it um, org wide, maybe it can make sense, it, it could make some sense as well. But yeah, this is something that should be discussed. Um, yeah. Maybe, yeah. But otherwise, yeah, in this case, I think it would be a nice next project to just experiment, see how it be, I mean, how it works, and if it simplifies the process to manage the project. So, yeah. yeah. We do use uh, GitHub projects uh, for some uh, um, uh, components, for example, uh, configuration of code plugin, also some development tools now like custom work packager, Jenkins file runner, um, and uh, some uh, Google Summer of Code projects chose to use uh, GitHub issues. Uh, it's uh, really convenient for standalone components. All components which are tightly integrated in the uh, Jenkins API system and then by cross dependencies on Jenkins Jira, it's a bit more complicated but doable. But, yeah, for example, Jenkins IO is de facto isolated because we use the website um, in the uh, Jenkins Jira, so it's already supposed to be isolated. Okay, yep. Um, so, yeah, otherwise. Yeah, okay. it's enabled. Um, next topic uh, that, that Mark want to bring here, which is about uh, Seattle Jenkins that I use stability. Um, do you understand? So yesterday we yesterday we had an what appeared to be an outage on the ACI allocation of Windows ACI agents. Uh, we resolved the, the the outage by working around it by using the by assigning the wrong label to the EC2 Windows agent. So it looked like it was an ACI agent and it seemed to resolve uh, the, the, the bigger picture problem that people weren't getting their, their processes executed. What we don't know is how to get Windows to allocate those, or how Azure to get, allocate those ACI agents. It appeared from the message that Tim was able to find on the Azure console as though the zone was refusing to allocate new ACI items, but I'm not entirely sure because I'm not familiar with that that allocation message. Was it was it a limitation on the number of deployments? No, no, it wasn't. Um, it was a it was a limit. So it said that they, they did, it said they didn't have the capacity in ECS2. So it wasn't right. a quota limit, it was a hard limit on the region. Yeah, they okay. specifically and they specifically mentioned the zone, right? US it was East East that's, US that's, something. That's a special East. region. So it's it's oh, not region. it's not it's not like a zone, it's an actual oh. region. Okay. It's a different data center, I think. Okay. That's right. Yeah, I can have a look after the meeting. But yeah, I can have a look after this meeting. I mean I ha I have to dig in the console to see what's happening there. Okay, so in the interim, we're using the workaround that, just for your info, um, Olivier, the EC2 Windows agent is mislabeled, and it's intentionally mislabeled with the Maven-Windows label. And once we get Windows ACI agents allocating again, we should remove that label from the EC2 um, Windows agent. But ju just to be sure, it was working before, right? Do you have an idea? It, it was working several days ago. Absolutely, it's yeah. the the failures be or the failure to allocate began yesterday. It was about twenty eight or twenty nine hours ago. Okay. Um. Um. Specifically for Windows. Yeah, right. I'll look after the meeting. Um, the, la the, another, the next the next topic that I want to, to mention is uh, I started work. Sorry? I was just going to say, I just, it's still happening. I just pasted the error in Jenkins Emperor. 
Thank you. Okay, so it's it's fresh there, so that Olivier's got fresh fresh information to read if he needs it. Thanks, Tim. Yep. I look right after meeting. Um, so yeah, anything else about this specific outage? Okay, right. Um, any do are we still affected by the Windows uh, by the Amazon uh, instances being disconnected after a while? Or yes, yeah. very very frequently. And the workaround is I reconnect them with the connect button. And I liked Oleg's comment that in June we'll spend additional energy after we get the, the release or as we get core release automation further along. Okay. You can, so you can, can run, a, run a script that automatically connects any disconnected agents. Yeah, this, this sounds like a really stupid idea because it will work and then we we will forget about that and then <laughs> we'll discover that issues in one one year. Anyway, um, okay, right. Um, so next topic, what you mentioned about automated release. Um, I started working on promoting um, artifacts, so basically on the, the, um, the different promotions. So we have two things that we have to promote, especially it's important for the security releases. The first one is to promote um, the Git repository, so basically to promote any commits from uh, the private uh, repository used by the security team to the to the public um, uh, repository, so to Jenkins here slash Jenkins. And the second thing that we also have to promote is the, um, the Maven artifacts that we pushed on basically on Artifactory. And so um, there is an open PR right now and where it's mainly Daniel and I discussing about the best way to promote. So Daniel is, uh, would prefer the approach where he just copy every uh, files under a specific repository to uh, the, the, the production one. And so we have to deal with, um, we have to be sure that the source repository only contain what we want to copy. Where uh, personally, I would prefer to uh, have the possibility to, to move um, items based on a, on a specific version. Let's say that we want to move to, um, every artifact related to the version 2.232, for example. But the limitation here is that um, I'm not sure how to know which um, group ID we can use. So for example, you have org.main.jenkinsci. For example, um, Jenkins war, or you have the bomb, you have the CLI. And I'm not sure um, if there is a way to retrieve that information. I don't know if you have any opinion. I know, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know if I was clear enough here. It was like, nope. I'm not. I'm not understanding. And I'm, my my general tendency is on things security related. When Daniel says that it makes a suggestion, I consider that almost almost a biblical mandate. Okay, so so I'm curious your 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 preference for something else. So. Teach us more. So um, let me share my screen. Maybe it will be more obvious. Um, sure. Um, pom, pom, pom. Like, no, how do I share from here? Share your screen. Yay. Application. Can you see my screen? Yes. So I'm lighting. I'm highlighting a few things. So basically, when we trigger, when we push a new Jenkins release, we push uh, multiple artifacts on the Artifactory. So we push um, uh, WAV file. I mean, we, we push our items under our Jenkins CI slash main CLI. We push items under Jenkins BOM. We push items under Jenkins core. And basically, what we want to promote from one version to another is we want to promote, for example, this specific item, uh, our Jenkins CI main Jenkins core, um, that specific version to, to the release Maven repository. So to the one that people really have access and download um, those information. And so basically what Daniel is suggesting is to not copy um, those specific items individually, but really to copy the, 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 the full repository from a source to uh, the destination. But um, this, impl this implies that um, the source destination only contain information 
for that specific release because the risk is if in the source repository we have this specific version but we also have um a few other version or testing version or whatever it will also move those specific version into the the production one so it's like um the solution that um daniel is proposing is like it seems like you move everything, but you have to be sure that you only have the content that you want on the source repository, where um, what I would like to do is to find a way to know um, what we need to move from a source to a destination. But knowing how Daniel develops the, the how he has to stay tightly sandboxed in that location where he's developing, I thought they were quite rigorous in being sure that the only things they allowed in that sandbox were things that they intended to be part of that. Yes, which in the case of the security release, but um, the reason why I was interested to have specific version is because we could also use that for the uh, weekly version, for example, because in this case, we could have a staging Maven repository where we push the version. And then once we are ready, we can promote that specific version into production. And so we are not public until we decide that we go public. So that's that's the main that's my main motivation. Um, so we could we could take the shortcut of Daniel, and in that case, um, it only works for security. But then we only use a promotion uh, for security, basically. I see. Yeah, and I, I I don't have a compelling case for using promotion outside of security, but I, I think I understand why Daniel has to have it for security. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I'll continue the discussion with Daniel uh, on that specific PR. Um, stop sharing. Um, yeah, otherwise, the next, the final, uh, the, the last topic that I can mention, that I want to mention is that uh, we are still working with um, Kozuke and the CDF to transfer um, the Azure accounts to the CDF, basically. Um, it's still a work in progress. What we did recently is we transferred the account from Tiger to me. So it could be easier to have, I mean, to remove one intermediary in this case, because yeah, it's quite hard to have Tyler, Kazuki, and then uh, at the same time on the same um, thing. But yeah, um, it's still working progress, basically. Otherwise, yeah, anything else that we want to discuss? Yes. Yeah, so regarding intermediate state, uh, we have a billing period in coming in one week, if I recall correctly. Uh, it's, um, it's, 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 it's in one week. Yeah. In one week and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So if we do not, uh, finish transfer by that time, what is our plan B? The plan B is KK pay the bill like he did previously. Okay. So it's a KK's credit card, not yours on the hook. So right now it's mine because I had to put mine um, for the transfer. Um, I did that on Friday, but um, I have to, to switch back to KK because um, my credit card will not be able to pay the bill anyway. Mm -hmm. So it was something like temporary, like um, I also use Mark Wait uh, phone because I had uh, I needed a US phone number to, to send the validation code. But yeah, this is something that I really would like to see, to see finished. Um, before the next bill arrives. Yeah. Uh, that's right. So if we have just a few days left, uh, I suggest we enable emergency plan whether it's Kiki or not. Yep. Uh, but, yeah. Well, and, and Olivia, if you need it, my card could actually survive one month worth of that bill. So if KK says, no, it's not coming back to me, I could, I could do it temporarily. Yeah, I mean, that's the, yeah, somebody, somebody's got to pay me. I mean, that's a big chunk of money, but but my credit card could survive it for one. Yeah, but yeah, there's something that I mean. The only thing that we need now is some information, some input from the CDF. Um, so I, I think we we are almost there. Okay. So uh, I, I just have one other item on Azure costs. We have through end of May to do Azure costs above the 10K goal, but is it through end of beginning June 1 that we need to be down to under 10K for our Azure costs, or is it end of June? I think it's end of June. Okay. I think it's end of June. Um, we still have some work to do there. Uh, the main, the, the biggest cost that we have right now is um, about package of Jenkins.io because uh, we also, so basically right now package of Jenkins.io um, fetch the artifact from Azure 
instead of fetching those artifacts from the mirrors. Um, this is something that was put in place several years ago. And um, basically, we have we have to, to disable that because we are paying bandwidth on Azure for this. Uh, and I mean, we don't need it. The main limitation that I have now, and that is something that I have to work is, in order to use the mirrors, uh, mirrors need to be able to to work on HTTPS. So even if we are not redirected to, uh, I mean, yeah, we need to be able to work on HTTPS for the mirror. Um, if I want to be able to to get rid of um, the Azure storage uh, for package or Jenkins that I use. So this, this will reduce the bill a lot. OK, um, right, um, last question. One time, two time, three times. So if you don't have any more questions, uh, thanks for your time and see you on RC. Yeah, yep. maybe one question. Uh, do you have access uh, to the developer mailing list? I mean, admin access. Um, that's a good question. I think I don't have, I'm, um, I can check, I'll check. Um, yep. I, know, I know that I, I, I have some access, but I'm not sure if I have full admin access. Yeah, so this, uh, why I'm uh, why I'm asking? Uh, Google has recently introduced new feature for Google Groups, uh, allowing to mark particular threads as completed. Okay. And yep. since we manage permission transfers, etc., uh, through mailing list, it would be useful to have this speech enabled uh, in general on the mailing list. Let me. Yep. I check if I have full access. Otherwise, I'm so, pretty sure Daniel does. Yeah, like I think I may have admin access to to the Jenkins developers. Maybe well. That would be I could I, I have a oh okay, I'm not the owner, so I can't delete the group. Mm -hmm. But I can group email into threads based on subject. I can archive messages. Can you manage user permission? Uh, permissions, okay, basic permissions. Who can join? Yeah, so tell me again what was the what was the th what was the feature that you were looking for, Oleg? It was uh, so um, uh, it's it should be possible uh, uh, to allow marking uh, threads as completed or answered. Yeah, so if you have permissions, we can just take it offline and handle it later. No. I, I, I am not sure that I do, but it, it seems that I may have permissions to. Uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't, I don't find that particular setting. Me neither, but uh, I can check. Okay. Yep. So, any other last question? One time, two time. Great time. Thanks for your time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.